Well, hello everyone, I hope you all doing fine. A friend of mine just came to me and told me, all right, your channel is perfect, I really like it already, but why don't you just upload your own analysis on the chart? And I said, hell yeah, why should I do that? So here I am to do this and I hope you like it. So currently I am on BTC USDT Perpetual chart and the feed is from Bybit as you can see because this is the exchange that I'm um, trading on. Before getting into analysis, previously I made videos about Bybit and why this is good, why I use it. It's Perfect. Watch that video if you haven't yet. The link is down in the description. I don't want to take your time with that. But just to put it quickly, by just signing up to buy bid and do your KYC, you have a chance of opening a mystery box and win up to $30,000. And by using my affiliate link down in the description, you have a plus chance of winning another mystery box worth up to $5,000. So you're not losing anything. Why don't you give it a try? Maybe it's going to be your lucky day. So getting back to uh, the analysis, how do I do this? The analysis myself on daily basis so I, I am a scalper as you know but for scalping especially for scalping you know, I, I'm talking about three minutes five minutes 15 minutes 30 minutes time frames you shouldn't do your analysis uh, on lower time frames why because uh, imagine it's like uh, you take a look at a picture and if you take a look at it uh, on daily time frame or, or um, let's say higher time frames like that it's like you uh, take a look at a portrait picture from uh, 10 meters distance and if you look at it at three minutes time frame or four, five minutes time frame, it's like you only looking at it uh, at like five centimeters distance. So in both cases, you don't have the general look. Uh, so what what I do is that I mainly take a look at three time frames: daily, one hour, and fifteen minutes time frame. So uh, what do I do exactly? I do my analysis on daily time frame, and I, I have a general look to overlook what is the current market trend. What should I expect for a market? to do and then uh, I go to one hour time frame to do my main analysis and then in 15 minutes time frame I do my scalping I look for trigger points for whatever reasons that my strategy tells me which I'm going to talk about later on in this video and in the upcoming videos which I'm going to do this on a daily basis from now on plus the strategies that I'm uploading uh, the best strategies that I can come up with and help you out with but here and now I want to do this and let's let, let's Let's get it done so what i do i'm trying to determine the main support and resistance levels or to say supply and demand zones so what do i do the way i do it is just take a look at the bigger picture here and look at the uh, hit points on the market uh, where are the hit points where the market had the most reactions to and then i'm gonna put not just one line because we cannot predict the exact point but i'd rather to determine an area of support or resistance or let's say supply and demand and I'm going to understand where the market is tend to go uh, as an area because sometimes it's going to be like a shadow it's going to be like a candle closed who knows you don't know what's going to happen in the future in the market and no one knows believe me no one even the biggest players of the market the whales they don't know they're just trying to play it out so what do I do is to determine my supply and demand zones uh, let me switch to yeah take a look at the previous data on the market I I don't want to go too far back but I can I just have a glimpse and uh, I can just have an overlook but the most recent market reactions and price action is has more weight to your analysis so what I do is I say okay I have one hit here I have another hits here then I go back and say yeah it's an important area for a Bitcoin plus it's an area of one rounded number $30,000 up to, all the way up to 31 so I'm going to just put a line here and then the horizontal ray here. What I do, I'm going to set another line above here to cover up this area because as you can see, it's an area that the price had a reaction to it. This is going to be my uh, resistance area and then I, I should look for support areas. Here's the reason why I say the most recent price action it has more weight to your analysis. If I want to draw my lines due to um, previous market data like here in here, I should uh, draw a, a resistance area here and then I come here and say okay price didn't pick it. So what I take a look is to like, uh, take a look at down here 
here and I see, yeah, previously there was a resistance area here. Then the price broke it and had a pullback to it and respected it perfectly. Draw another area somewhere around here and I'm going to determine this area like this. So as you can see, it's perfectly done. Now I know two zones, I need more. So should I put one here? I'll take a look at back here and I say, yeah. There is another area around here, but it's not here because I have a lower point. So should I put my area down here or above here? I say yes, both. I'm going to put one line here and the next one here. So next what I want to do is to determine the overall trend. So I'm just going to draw a normal trend line like this from here all the way to here. And I do not mind the shadows. So shadows are not important in price action. going to be like this and that's it. What I know at the moment is that the market is in a strong uptrend and is respecting everything. Okay, I have higher lows, higher highs, and everything is going perfectly in an uptrend. But what I know is that I have reached an area which the price has previously had a couple of rejections from it. As you can see previously here, and then here, and now here. But I know that I have have two support areas support zones here one dynamic support which is this trend line which is respected beautifully previously and the other one is this static support area here so I know if the market even wants to go down it will go down to here and then here some people say okay the market is an uptrend I shouldn't take a short trade let's add some indications and indicators to the chart and see whether we have to do it or not so let's add an EMA, moving average exponential, simple stuff here, nothing crazy. I'm going to put the length to 50. Why 50? Because I have the overall look and overall trend. Uh, I don't want to make it too long and make it the same as the trend line because if I'm going to increase it to 200, it's going to be exactly like the trend line. Just let's see if it works. Yeah, you see, we have the convergence of the 200 EMA and the trend line here. So I don't want to do that. I go for something like 20, 50 or 20. It doesn't matter. It's up to your own reference. You should work it out for yourself. But what I want to say here is that let's, let's take a look at this trading range here. And what should I do if I want to do my analysis and take some trades? What I want to say is that I take a look at back and I see, okay, previously when I had one bearish engulfing candle here, so I had a correction down here which is exactly the cross point of both dynamic and static support level and it respected it perfectly and I took this trade actually and it was like this and I put my uh, stop loss around here and I took out of the trade somewhere around here and yeah it was a beautiful trade and I enjoy enjoyed it it was perfect and I gained something like 11% it is crazy good and then I took another trade here and I'm gonna later on say why I did this of course uh, the first indication was this beautiful bullish engulfing here but I didn't take the trade here because I was not at the, the chart in that moment but then I've seen the other indication here and I've entered the trade why let me show you why let's add the RSI yeah I've seen this beautiful divergence here and if you can see it was both on the both support levels so I took this long trade by the close of this candle which was above the EMA and then stop loss here guess what and uh, target point here so this is how I do I just wanted to show you how I, I do it and then uh, as you can see here we have the same story going on let's let's zoom in as you can see I have lots of indications telling me okay the price tends to go down at least first to this target point somewhere right here I'm going to show you where because this is the, 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 this is a, a sloping line this is a, a dynamic support level and where to put the your target point I'm going to talk, talk about that but uh, just before that let's see if I can see some indications let me remove the EMA okay do I have some indications which shows me okay the price
price tends to go down? Yes, I do. I have one engulfing here, bearish engulfing, three black crows here. And let's have a quick pause here. If you don't know the whole concept, especially if you're a beginner, you don't know how to read candlesticks, how to properly manage your risk management, go for proper position sizing. Don't worry. I previously made completely dedicated sessions and videos about those. The links are down in the description. Don't bother going anywhere else. I've, I've explained everything for you. But then I have a strong bearish engulfing here, which tells me, okay, the price, the price tends to go down. I highly recommend to watch also my video on Fibonacci retracement levels, but let's draw a Fibonacci level from this bottom to this top and see how can I get my target points. All right. In drawing Fibonacci levels, unlike the, drawing the trend lines in price action, you have to measure the wicks as well. Let's say that I want to enter into a sell short position here, put my stop loss slightly above this area and go for a sell short trade. What I do is that I know this is a trading range, but I have a support level here. What I want to do is that I know if Fibonacci retracement levels, the golden area is the 0.61 here. And I'm going to set my first target point here. So this is going to be my first target point. When it's going, um, you know, about the position sizing, I, I told you, you have to watch that video. But what I do, if I enter, for example, let's say with $100 into this trade, despite the leverage and everything, I come out of the trade like 50% of my trade here by a limit order. And then uh, what I do is to uh, set my stop loss, you know, trail my stop loss and uh, bring it from here, which it was previously here and put it on my entry level slightly a little bit down because if the market goes against you, you don't want to be exactly on your entry level because it's going to deduct some fees from you. Then you're going to be a little bit negative. So slightly below it here. Then uh, this is going to be my first target point. Why 50% I came out? Because if you measure the distance from this area, the bottom of this uh, resistance level to the top of the support level, this is all almost half the way. So I want to come out half of my trade here to gain some profit and make my trade risk-free. And then the next stop would be somewhere around here. If uh, this trend line is going to be broken, what I ex expect is for the price of the Bitcoin to go down to this support level, then go back up here, somewhere around here. Where, where is that somewhere? You can determine by looking at the previous data on the chart. It's gonna be somewhere around here because previously market had some reactions to it here or here let me just it's gonna be somewhere around here perfect let me change the color for you a little bit more opacity okay this is going to be pullback area like this so if this is going to be broken like this then the price had a will have a pullback to here this is my prediction it shouldn't be right remember the first rule of the market is uncertainty so these are just predictions then go here and if the second area is going to be broken then we will have this kind of movement when do i take short trades so there are different scenarios that you can do you can come out of the trade here like 50 percent then come out out of another 20%, 25% here and leave an, another 25% for the next area, which is here. But what I do is that I want to make the most out of the market and I want to go for if and ifs and ifs. So what I do is to just come out of the trade here like 50%. Uh, the price is uh, 27,500, somewhere around that area. And then another 50% here, then I'm out. Then I wait for the price to do the pullback and decide because after this kind of movements, we mostly have consolidating areas. So um, I will wait for the market participants to decide uh, where to push the market. And if I wanna go short below this area, I first must wait for a pullback to this area area why a pullback you know we have two types of trading mainly in this kind of situations breakout trading or let's say more secure kind of price action
mentioned, the breakout is that most of the people just take the trade as soon as this area is going to be breached. But I don't like that because maybe it's going to be a liquidation trap. So I don't want to be a part of that. I want to minimize my risk as much as possible. How to do that, you have to watch my previous videos. This is not an educational session. This is only my own analysis. To wrap it up, the first target point is going to be here. 27,500-ish. And then this is going to be the first target point. The second target point is going to be somewhere around down here. Here, 25k yeah 25 500 somewhere around there and then i will wait for the market i, I don't want to say you know i've seen lots of videos people doing predictions and they say okay i they can predict market going for one month from now it's gonna go there but it's not possible come on if someone could do that they would be the god of trading now which we want we don't have someone like that so let me know what you think what is your own analysis down in the comments i would be happy to discuss it uh, maybe you have some more ideas uh, i'm open to uh, any kind of ideas no one's gonna be 100 percent sure this is only my analysis it shouldn't be right though but i hope it's gonna be and you're gonna like it thank you so much for your precious time uh, i will come back tomorrow and see what the market it did is it going to our favor or not if yes we just keep going on with it if not and it's going against us we should see what was the reason so this is only the technical analysis you have to do your own fundamental analysis too which i previously made a video about that make sure to check the uh, links and videos down in the description you're gonna like it believe me you won't regret it till tomorrow bye bye